what if the whistleblowers are telling the truth? This is a special episode of Mysteries with the History, where we will discuss the scenarios as laid out by various UFO whistleblowers over the decades. With the recent statements of whistleblower David Grush, many are asking if the government really possesses intact and partially intact vehicles of non-human origin. The U.S. government has been urged to discuss evidence of unexplained anomalous phenomena following allegations from former intelligence official David Grush and other whistleblowers that it possesses intact and partially intact non-human vehicles, as well as bodies of extraterrestrials. Hello and welcome to this episode of Mysteries with a History, where you'll be taken on a wild ride into the unknown, the strange, and the mysterious. Like you, I have questions, and like you, I want answers. And with each episode together, we will peel away the layers to look for the truth. I want to say that as far as we know, as I know, as you know, everything discussed today is based on anecdotal statements. We are going to theorize and speculate based on what we've from what has been said without tangible evidence. This is important to note because so many make literal belief systems out of the topics we're going to discuss and opinions are made into statements of fact for many, and this is not productive. Discussion and debate is great when it comes to musing and discussing anecdotal evidence, but in the end, an opinion is not a fact and facts don't care about your feelings. And that is a big issue with gossip columnists and tabloid hacks who take these mysteries and spin them controversially, looting them for their own ego and agenda. And we don't do that here on this channel. I'm on the fence with everything and stay on the fence while keeping a healthy, open mind. We need to have these discussions because yes, our world and our civilization is in a mess in so many aspects. And I want to look forward to a future where humanity is a peaceful space faring species, but we're not there yet. We haven't earned it. And my point is this, if we have really recovered alien vehicles and the technology to go to the stars, it is something that everyone should know about. What worries me is if we go out into the universe, blundering with our greed, our corporate interests, and warlike nature with stolen alien technology, won't we be setting ourselves up for failure in the eyes of far superior civilizations. We can't even get along with each other and take care of ourselves and our planet. And while I want to think that we will one day make it into space and visit distant worlds, I don't believe that we're ready. If, if secret military groups or corporations in the military industrial complex are already working with these technologies, are they doing this in the best interest of all of mankind? Well, let's get into these questions. Let me bring in my co-host, Jimmy Church of Fade to Black Radio. Jimmy, th this, th this, is, this is a big topic today, and it's something that we definitely need to discuss. And I had so many questions at the beginning, and hopefully you can provide your insights and your opinions on these things. But it's something that's on a lot of people's minds. Uh, that was a that was a very impressive opening statement, Christina. Very impressed. Very impressed. Very well thought out to the point, um, and 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 complete. I've got nothing to add. We can wrap the show. How are you doing? Did you have ramen today? <laughs> have to. What? What? Um, uh, I mean, you you said a lot there. And my opening question every single week is the same thing. What, what, you know, what, why are we here today? And, and what got your head into this space? Well, obviously, uh, things have been stirred up uh, over the last couple of weeks, you know, uh, 10, 12, 14 days or so. And it's got you a little bit riled up, uh, young one. I don't see this out of you too often. I used to ask you, um, uh, I, I remember this a couple of years ago. Christina, I, I don't care about that. I want your opinion. I want what, what, what are you thinking? What do you, Jimmy, I don't know. I'm not going there. Well, it's a different day, obviously. 
um, you've got you've got stuff to say, and I think it's very important. We don't normally on this show we get into the facts and we get into uh, you know the history of things and 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 go through uh, uh, encounters and, and experiences and stuff, um, which is always fun to do. What we rarely do, this may be the first time is where we get into the meat of the matter. And uh, I, I agree with you. It's very, very important. Um, the The one statement that I do make a lot is that our community, and that includes you and I, um, our community is brought here for emotional and personal reasons. It's an experience. They're interested a family member, they've seen something, whatever it is, they are brought here for those reasons. And um, when emotions are involved and you have breaking news like we had last Monday, Stephen Creer had his presentation a, a week later this past Monday, uh, we've got Las Vegas, which is the story. This is the gift that keeps on giving here, uh, this Las Vegas alien encounter in this family's backyard. Um, that combined with everything else that is going on, uh, emotionally, people are, uh, what's the word I want to use? A tripping out, right? They're, they're stirred up. They're stirred up. They're stirred up. And they should be just like you are and and myself. Uh, these are crazy, exciting times. Now, um, so let me let's start here because we've got uh, a, a pretty heavy show with uh, uh, very deep subjects that we're going to get into tonight. When you first decided to go down this path, broadcast media, the unexplained mysteries with the history, which is which is a great title for the show. Um, and everything else that you do. Did you ever imagine being in the place where we have found ourselves uh, uh, throughout the last year? Did you did you think we were actually going to get here this quickly? Truly, honestly, I had absolutely no expectations. I just thought I'm really interested in this. Let's let's go for it. And I didn't expect it to one, I mean, get this far, but secondly, to, to see the progression of the UFO phenomenon, the UFO conversation in the public's eye, especially in the last year, 2023 has been a hot year in every aspect of the way. Um, and it's something that I'm really, really shocked after doing, and I know you've done a significant amount of research going from decades prior, really digging into the books and seeing that really slow pace when it comes to the UFO conversation. And then bam, 2023 comes along and we're just getting stuff maybe once a month, right? On average, uh, which is, which is absolutely spectacular. So I didn't expect this. No, but am I grateful? You betcha. Definitely am. Yeah. I, um, I, I have done an enormous amount of shows and broadcasting and film and television and and up to a certain point uh, a few years ago um, I used to get a lot of criticism from the skeptics and the debunkers out there and and telling me that you know that none of this stuff is real and and it's it's a waste of time and and I I was never really discouraged by that. But I can say this, we're on the right side of history now. <laughs> Those, yeah. Right, right. Those emails and that type of criticism is is getting smaller and smaller, if nearly non-existent. And for me, that um, and, and others, there's so many uh, out there that have put their entire lives, dedicated everything to this for decades and it, it just wondering if we were ever going to get to the end of the road. Now we can we can see the end of the road. And, and in some cases, I feel that we have actually arrived. Uh, so for me personally, the journey has been a lot of fun. It's not over yet, but I feel like, uh, you know, me and others, we did the right thing. You know, and saying that we're on the right side of history, I, I, it's something I repeat a lot, but 
if if you go back, Christina, and and we look at, uh, I want to start with whistleblowers um, on the show uh, today. But we we've got David Grush. Um, but if we go back through my broadcast in the histories of the subjects that I've done and brought on one, quote, whistleblower after another, after another, um, and, and, and waiting, and I used to say, you know what? Let's give this three years. Let's give this four years. Let's not jump yet. Let's wait, and then we can look back at this situation. And as it turns out, for the most part, I'm going to go 99.9%. I was right, but I was only right because I stayed in the middle, right? There you go. You have to. That's the best thing to do. I and stayed in the middle. With, I stayed in the middle. You, you have to. You have to be on the fence. You have to have an open mind but still be skeptical. You can't believe everything, but you can't be a total debunker because there is a big difference between a debunker and a skeptic. And I've said this before, and I'll say it a thousand more times because people are like, I'm a debunker. And it's like, all right, bye. We're out of this conversation. I'm not going to deal with you. But if you're a skeptic, it's a different story. Um, AJ Raffles, thank you so so much for that making some funny jokes about ramen because you can never go wrong with ramen so thank you so much Dr. Scoppy. <laughs> there you go That's and right. Tuffy That's thank good. you so much as well so earlier this week for top five I spoke about the top five whistleblowers in my opinion of course there's a longer list and I had people in the comments saying why didn't you bring up this person why didn't you bring up that person I said look it's only top five all right out of thousand people but one thing that i do want to start off with today's show before we move forward for those i didn't watch that top five is the definition of a ufo whistleblower right let's let's hear your opinion on what that is um for those that aren't sure and then i'll read my definition yeah it, it, a, a whistleblower is not somebody that's yapping all right that's not a whistleblower and it, no matter what your background is a whistleblower to me is somebody that goes through the legal processes, um, lawyers up, fills out the paperwork and says, look, I've got something to say. I need to be protected. And this is why I need to be protected. Here's the list of stuff. It's a big gamble. We have a nuclear whistleblowers, uh, Aaron Brockovich and, and, and things that have happened in the past where the, the revelations uh, because you get into legal areas. A whistleblower is somebody that uh, says there's something illegal going on here. I have found out. I don't want to be a part of it. And I am willing to uh, not only risk myself personally, but my family and everything else. And I'm going to come forward and I need to be protected legally. Right. Yeah. And UFO whistleblowers often share their accounts, their testimonies or evidence in an effort to shed light on the existence of UFOs, potential extraterrestrial contact and government efforts to suppress information about these phenomena. And that's the biggest thing. Now, here's the downfall with the ones that we've received so far. Of course, they are elevating this conversation. They are risking everything. And, you know, they're 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 getting famous, at least in our community. But the the ones this one side effect, the one issue is that they're not really bringing in the evidence. They're only bringing their word. But with a lot of people that have come forward that are whistleblowers that have a background in the government, that word is golden. Right. And then it's up for the person to decipher if they believe them or not. Is it all a psyops? Is it is it just something else to add to the pot to confuse other people to look a different way? There are so many ways you can look at this. But for us in the community, this is a really big deal. And we just have received another one, which is David Grush. Is he setting a new foundation in modern times? to allow more people to come forward to risk their lives and their families' lives, but even able to potentially bring some evidence that maybe might not be classified by the government, but maybe they had it somehow and they're like, oh, this one isn't classified. Here you go. Check it out. Right. That would be so awesome. But for for today's show, we're looking into the aspects of what if this is all true? What if everything that's ever been said about the about UFO history, UFO crashes, people that have come forward, not just whistleblowers, but experiencers as well. What if they, what if every aspect of that was true? How would we react to all of this? And that's the exciting 
uh, conversational piece for today. And as you mentioned, this is more of a discussion show. We're not bringing in these hardcore evidence pieces and, and dates and times, because today we'll be talking about previous cases that we've mentioned on this show and dissecting it in a different light, really. Also, Michael, thank you so much. I have one question for Christina. How has uh, your week been with the interest from your fellow students? And do they feel that they have been out of the loop on this topic? That's a really great question. So when this came out with David Grush, I received a lot of text messages. I got people pulling me off the side when walking to class. And they said, Christina, sit down. You need to explain this to me. And I said, look, sweetheart, I got you. I got you. And then I, try, I attempt to go into detail and on, on explaining a, a few of these different things. But, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes isn't going to isn't going to give them a whole background on this on this information. But people are getting curious. People are, want to have a better understanding. And they're coming to shows like these, like yours, Jimmy, like so many others to have help fill in the gaps where the media falls short or where their news outlets fall short as well. And so, yes, we are seeing a lot more interest in young people's minds. And I hope that remains steady and continues onward. That's why this show was, that's why this channel was created to get people that don't have a background in these things to to, to get a foundation. And I definitely try to do these shows as an easy format for new curious minds. That's what this is all about. Yeah. And now here we have, um, we can talk about other whistleblowers uh, a little bit later, but with, with Grush, we have as, uh, as fact, the, uh, the presentation of classified materials has changed hands from him to the IG's office and to Capitol Hill, Congress, and the Senate. And now I don't know what the contents of that are. I realize that everybody wants to see the proof. Every, myself, I'm right there. What is it that he presented? Is it was it video? Is it a DVD? Is it uh, photographic images? Is, uh, is it written reports? Um, uh, classified documents of materials, uh, locations of these uh, alien craft, and uh, you know he has used the word pilots. That of course these craft, uh, some of them must have had pilots, and and we have those too. What? Um, so now, non-human entities, right? Uh, NHIs, uh, ET, if you will. So we want to, but we know that this evidence now is is spreading through. And what was interesting to me, and this is different from anybody else in the past, and, and I'm not taking away from from any of them, and that includes you know somebody as controversial as Bob Lazar. But um, the the statements that have been made by Grush went straight to Capitol Hill, and we got the reaction from both uh, from both houses that that's it. We're going to have hearings now. What does that ultimately mean? It is not only based on his testimony and the things that he has said, of course, Ross Colthart's excellent interview. We can't uh, ignore Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal and the debrief, them breaking the story to begin with, that it, those statements were there. But there's classified documents that have exchanged hands. And if those documents state that we have in our possession, alien craft from another world not made by us, this is a big deal. And if that's what the hearings are going to be based on, can you imagine not only the questions, but the answers and what evidence is going to be presented at those hearings? And will the public for the first time, which includes me, which includes you, Christina, for everybody out there that is screaming, where's the evidence? Where's it? Right now, it's, yeah, where is the evidence? We want to see the proof. And we are at that point. I don't know how the hearings are going to develop. I don't know how they're going to be handled. 
I don't know if the press is going to be there. I don't know if this is going to be live streamed on C-SPAN and this channel, right? I don't, I don't know these things yet, but a hearing is a hearing. And the hearing right now, the hearings, I'm going to say that plural, are based on the evidence that was passed forward. So um, it, it, th- this right now, today, craziest time in human history, just the, the nuttiest time ever. Oh, without a doubt. And I want to touch on something that you mentioned. But first, Ray, thank you so much for being a YouTube member. Welcome to the channel. And Terry, thank you so much for supporting the channel and the RV Fund as well. So for those watching this live, I placed a poll on YouTube. And it says, imagine for a moment that everything the whistleblowers have been saying is, is true. If confirmed, is it A, it will create global chaos. We got 12% on that. It will begin a new age of humanity, 44%. It will never be confirmed, 25%. And people will want to have contact, 19%. Really? That- with contact. I went with contact. Well, the, the poll will be up for the entire show. So for those that are watching this, please answer that. And if and if you watch the replay, answer in the comments as well. But let's get started talking about some of the things that have no, no, that no, have no, no no no. Let's stay on this poll for a second. I, I'm sorry, I just stepped all over you, Christina. I didn't mean to do that. No, let's stay on this poll for a second. Um, I totally get, and I, the, the, the new age of humanity, I was right there. And then I thought to myself, it's actually a deeper subject than that, right? Where's the beef? Where's the proof we need to see? And I think, uh, that it should be uh, that everybody would expect contact, I'm, 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 I'm very surprised about this. Now it's your poll, but if you were going to click, which where, where, where because there are four good choices, right? There's really wasn't a wrong choice there, but I won with contact. Where would you have gone? Yeah, I'm going to agree with you on that one. People will want to have contact. They want to see the proof for themselves. They want to experience it for themselves. For those that are a bit more open-minded or not too worried about this, I think they would want to have contact. But then we could bring in the idea of, I mean, look, who doesn't want to meet aliens? But if we were, it could be like the episode of the Twilight Zone, How to Surf Man. Where it's like, oh, yeah, we're here to save everybody, take them on the ship, eat all this food, and then bam. It's right. actually a cookbook, right? Right, 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 <laughs> right, 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 right. right. Some, so, hey, 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 I'm not here to, to get all whack, but anything is possible, right? Oh, my gosh, anything is possible. <laughs> anything and if, is possible. and if we have had alien craft tucked away, uh, being back engineered somehow, how would that get confirmed? How many heads would roll? Are they in the hands of secret military groups or major corporations in the military industrial complex? How did how would this get confirmed, Jimmy? Well, okay. That is uh I would expect that the next step where we are right now. Yes, I, I know the documents and the videos and the but I think that the next step in especially when you're at whistleblower status, name names. All right. Now we are at the point of uh okay, who's got the alien craft? Where's the location? That that's where we are at. Where are the alien bodies? Who has them? What doctors have uh, analyzed these bodies? What what companies have backwards engineered this? Um, not only what companies, what did they profit from? Right? Did did they did is some of the right? Did Steve Jobs is this alien technology? Right? Is, is these are the things? Let's go there. Let's go there directly. Where the, the locations, the companies, the government organizations, uh, the people that were behind it. Now that's where we are. We are at that stage of naming names. I don't want to hear any more. I really don't. Well, somebody said. I don't. No, who said? <laughs> right? Hey, well, we have flying where? Where are the craft? 
Let's go. Let's well, then, would it be like storming Area 51 if you were to receive that information with the location as well? Or do you think people would be a little bit more docile and be like, no. oh, you said it? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That'll do. Yep, 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 yep. That is definitely the danger zone that we are in. But the government brought this upon themselves. Okay, so... Um, everybody knows I live in Palmdale. I'm a mile away from Lockheed Skunk Works. If Lockheed Skunk Works, and I believe that they do, if they have uh, an alien craft or two or three down the street from my house, would I expect the RV caravan like an Independence Day? You remember that? <clears throat> Going across it. Would that happen? Probably. They And they should expect that. They absolutely, we have the right to know. And if that is the case, you know, you have to rip the band aid off. It's such a great point and a great question, Christina. The the Area 51, raid Area 51, you remember that? What, five million people, you know, responded to that or whatever. It was millions for sure. Um, kind of freaked everybody out. And that went all the way to the White House. They had brought in extra security. Nobody showed up, of course. Um, but the interest is there. Now, if it goes to the next level and they go, uh, I was going to grab a photograph or something. You know, they pull up. Here's the photograph. This is the uh, this is the flying saucer in the hangar. Out in the Mojave Desert, we have Edwards Air Force Base out here. Of course, it's up the street. And then we have Lockheed and everything else that's going on uh, over at the research facilities down the road here. Um, what, what, wherever it is, is it Area 51? I don't know. Is it Wright-Patterson? I don't know. Is it somewhere else completely separate? Is it Boeing? Is it Raytheon? Right? Is it General Electric? Is it all of the above? Is it Bell Laboratories? But what what about the illegalities behind keeping the stuff hidden away? Could that be why these things have never seen the light of day? Okay, is it, if this has been going on for fifty plus years, how much shady shenanigans have been going on there? What do you think about that, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know the blanket answer to all of that, how they could have kept this secret, it's in the interest of national security, right? Right there, boom! It's the blanket, it's the boilerplate stamp that they put on it, and and once you go there, it scares the crap out of every. It, there is, you know, the threat of prison and and fines, and of course. Uh, your career, your retirement, your 401k, your family and your kids and everything else, all of that, the fear factor comes into play. Nobody wants to mess with something that's in the interest of national security. But in this situation that we find ourselves in now, and we all knew this day was coming, we all knew it. Uh, the 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 big disclosure when it happens has thousands, if not millions, of implications that come off of this. But it was going to happen sooner or later, you know. And you know what would be worse, Christina? Two questions, two views. I want your answer. What could be worse? Ripping the Band-Aid off and going on national TV and saying we have uh, stuff in our possession. Yes, we are not alone in the universe. We have been in contact with E.T. That or B, a mothership shows up over Los Angeles and catches everybody by surprise. What would be worse? The alien mothership showing up over Los Angeles would scare the crap out of everybody. We would have pandemonium. The other choice, and if one of them is going to happen sooner or later, is rip the Band-Aid off. Let's just get to it. We know we're being visited. Let's go. The time is now. So I think that's where the government is at. They know they've got to get out in front of this. The the other choice, which is a mothership above Los Angeles or Moscow, Paris, like the movie Arrival, which is well, like the Phoenix Arrival. Lights in 1997. Well, you know, see, and that was close. 
But you know, but see, that was also a mass signing. And in that aspect, people weren't panicking. Were they ready in Phoenix? No, I don't know about that. But so the, the first thing that I can think of, if it all turns out to be true, is that America's space program is a big and pretty expensive whitewash, which has also which has also like cost many lives as well. And if we have back engineered that craft, do we have military personnel or scientists working in secret programs going out into space? That's my question. What do you yeah, think about yeah, that? Of course we do. Absolutely. Now, what version of that is is true when anybody all of the above right right when somebody says well man do you know what's the proof of a secret space program church well look the x-37b just right there the x-37b it we fly that into space it does two-year missions and we know nothing about it now to get the 30 X 37 B up there, it had to be designed. You have engineers, you have scientists, you have pilots, you have uh, launch systems, you have all of the logistics and the materials and, and the corporations that are behind it, all of that. Then you have the missions itself that how many thousands of people are involved with the launch and what is on the X-37B and what is it doing in space? What is it doing for two years? What is its mission? Well, you know what? We know nothing about it. We know it exists, but the people behind it, the scientists, the engineers, the, the software engineers, the pilots, every, the entire a system of logistics, of supplies, and everything else behind that is secret. We know nothing about it. So can you keep a secret? Yes. Are there scientists involved with this? They are involved with it right now. How extensive is it? I don't know. You know, is it is it time that we start to uh, get the stuff out in the open? Probably. Um, I, I, Russia's doing the same thing. China's doing the same thing. And and we want to, uh, uh, you know, keep our cards close to our chest. And, and we don't want to expose and let everybody else know. Well, you know what? We have a right to know. And I think, I think that right now, once everything starts to unfold, it's all going to be out in the open. I think we'll be a better planet because of it. I you know, that's the goal. That's the hope that we all want is that if we're able to have this type of mass contact, that people will put a, put aside their differences as a very famous speech goes, and then we will unite. But Alex, thank you so much. She says, I'm a skeptic, very open minded, though. Nevertheless, a skeptic, but I do find it hard to believe that in a such a vast universe, we are alone. There is ab it's great that you're a skeptic, but that you're also open minded. You're willing to listen to other people's insights and opinions, but you still have questions. That's what it's all about. If you're a full blown believer in everything that someone tells you, good luck trying to go through the world. It's not going to work for you. But if you're super close minded, just like this little tiny tunnel vision, good luck going through the world because that's going to be very hard for you as well. So being in being in the middle, following that middle path or being on the fence, it's it's absolutely perfect. And Jimmy, to what you said, I can understand that the like security right after or secrecy right after world war ii because everyone was on edge imagine talking about ufos and aliens in 1947 jimmy the generation of that period i don't think their society could have withstood learning the truth but now almost 80 years later where we're we've been primed i would say since the 70s with movies and then that turned into video games and so on and so forth into tv shows i think that there's a higher chance of us being ready more so than in 1947. Well, somebody had to be first. Somebody had to step up. Like I said, this day was coming. All right. This day was, we just didn't know when we didn't know the, who, the, how, the, what we didn't know that, but there had to be somebody first. And that is David Grush. 
And that that that's now uh, when when Gillibrand wrote into the budget and and into law um, this uh, you know let's go with air quotes here whistleblowers uh, to protect those so that not only their future and their jobs but their reputation and, and the Italian and everything else that goes with that that puts the fear into everybody from stepping out and 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 coming forward with something like this well Gillibrand included that what what did we do we talked about that that the, those words a lot not only you and I but my Myself and and virtually every guest that I had on the show, uh, specifically about that point, protecting whistleblowers, also the health issues too as well, but protecting the whistleblowers. And so, who would be first, right? Who, who's going to do this? Who's going? You know, you know. I have said many times, the people that really know, you don't know their names. No. That's no, it. they will never they will never speak up. And and but those are the people that we all want to speak to. Is that now David Grush? Once Grush has stepped forward with um a, a, a CV and uh, a resume that is all verifiable, vetted, and checked out. So we know who he is, we know his background, and we know that he has had access and spoken to the right people. And and for as uh for somebody to be that courageous to to step forward and and make these kinds of statements where of course you're going to have people stepping back going, you know, that, that's a bunch of BS. You know, I'm not buying. This is a different situation. He went through the right channels. This isn't somebody just blowing. He went through the right channels and passed on that classified information that that told him in his mind where we are with this subject. And that it's a very, very important difference than everything else that has happened in the past, which has been great, of course, but with David Grush, it's different. And was it Gillibrand writing that in uh, that enabled Grush to safely step forward? Uh, hopefully, um, I use the word safe, uh, without any repercussions. You know, well, I, David's he, asking, uh, why Why do you trust him? And what I, I want to answer this one first, and I want to say that I don't trust him. I'm observing, waiting for collaboration, but so far, okay, he has taken the correct legal path, but that's it. Um, talking about collaboration and cooperation as well, right? He 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 is following the steps that need to be done, and I think that we just need to continue observing. But he hasn't, while he's provided some really great, you know interesting sentences for news nation which was a great interview by the way totally recommend watching it if you haven't seen it already both of them the short version and the long version but aside from that i don't necessarily trust him yet because he hasn't brought anything forward that is significant enough well, to say oh my gosh i'm fully for it or yeah, not fully for it i'm on the fence and like i said i'm just waiting and but he has taken the correct legal path though and that's what's important that's what matters he didn't just open a youtube channel and say hey guys i i used to work for the government and i know everything i'm going to share that with you see that's very sketch but in this case he didn't do that <laughs> and that's why he's getting the attention that many believe that he deserves I think, in in my opinion, okay, all right. Now everybody, just listen to me for a second. David Grush's job is done. He was first. He was the first whistleblower. What he set out to accomplish, he did. All right. What are the results of David Grush coming forward? That is hearings. Capitol Hill, the awareness of this is now elevated and the documents have changed hands. So it, it, uh, could we hear from Grush again about, about what? What, what, what is it, you know, now it, it, it's, it, it, it goes over to the lawmakers and, and Capitol Hill for them to go, okay, 
where's the craft, where's this, where's this evidence, and we have these hearings uh, hopefully open and in public, and, 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 and Grush completed what he set out to do. And that, I think that's what's most important here. It's not about, let's get Grush on the record. What did he say? We don't need that. What we need is the hearings to happen, and and it appears that everything is in motion. I think it's job well done. He he got it done. Somebody had to be first. It was David Grush. It, it was. It was. And, Android, thank you so much. The brand-new B-21 never leaked to the public either. Mm-hmm. And Brian as well, thank you. It says people panicked over War of the Worlds because they thought aliens were invading, not because they thought aliens existed. I've I've heard I've heard that as well, and I find that pretty interesting. And I and I hear what you're saying. The the stage is set for hearings, and I think also the stage is set for more whistleblowers. Maybe, maybe who will have evidence. Right. I mean, you would think so. I mean, do you think that is coming, Jimmy? More whistleblowers coming forward with evidence. Uh, I picture this scenario. OK, in the documents, I keep saying Lockheed Skunk works because I think that they're the central figure in in a lot of this. But this is the scenario. There are documents now in possession of the IG um, and and Congress and, and the Senate, right? Congress being the House of Representatives and the Senate. And in those documents, now I am theorizing here, but in those documents, it says Lockheed Skunk Works is in possession of one, like the Wilson Davis documents, right? Okay, so Lockheed Skunk Works. So now you have Marco Rubio, or the head of the Senate Intelligence Committee, or or whoever it is, Tim Burchett, maybe it's even Jill Brown, whoever, right? Um, uh, whether it's in the, the, the House or the Senate, and you bring forward the, the CEO of Lockheed Skunk Works, okay? And now you are questioning them. What do you have? Is the truth going to come out at that moment? And are you going to catch a CEO like that in a lie? And then the the House, this is why the hearings are so important. The House goes, well, wait a minute. It says right here that you've had this craft since, and you got the craft from here. And this, uh, so are you telling who this is a, a, a classified document that states the opposite of what you are saying here? So, and you know what's going to happen. They're going to cover the microphone. The, the lawyer's going to come over and whisper in his ear and go, uh, you know, that that's why the hearings are so important. That's why we have to name names. And now we have to get to those, not, not only those uh, who are responsible, but those that have worked on the craft. You know, the next, uh, uh, next uh, 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 whistleblower classification, which would go beyond David Grush, a systems engineer, right? Um, a, a, a somebody, a, a biochemist, um, somebody that's in anthropology that studied the, the alien bodies. That type of whistleblower coming forward, um, that is, that's a really big deal, right? If we have a, a an engineer that has come forward and says, okay, yes, yes, I have worked on the flight control systems of the craft and, and this is what I did. That's... That's the next step, and that's what the hearings would, uh, in my opinion, not only reveal, but be so important. The power is in Washington, D.C. when it comes to stuff like this. Uh, you're muted. Thank you. Scott has an interesting question, and he asks, do you think Rush will go in hiding like Lazar? Lazar never went into hiding. But he walked away from the public. He, he, he didn't. He didn't want to give any more interviews. He didn't want to talk about it, and he, and he he right. left. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Um, and like I said, Grush is, uh, in in my estimation, uh, it's job completed, right? Mission complete. Um, can he bring more to the table? Well, okay. I, what more do we need than hearings? 
on, on Capitol Hill and these investigations to move forward because of his statements. That's the biggest thing that we need is, is not just for him to come forward and say what he said, but to get the ball rolling more significantly to make this a more serious conversation. And David Martin uh, mentioned under oath. Well, actually, a really interesting whistleblower that did speak under oath was um, Clifford Stone. And he said, he said that all the things that I have seen, I can say under oath. And also um, Philip Corso as well. So in June of 1998, retired army colonel swore under oath to seeing alien bodies and autopsy reports. He was a part, uh, he wrote the book the day after um, the day after Roswell. Mm -hmm. Right. And he gave this oath, and I mentioned this on top five, but he gave this oath almost exactly a uh, just a, right before his passing. So he passed away in July of 1998 and he swore under oath in June of 1998. And I think that is what's really significant. But I also mentioned this on Tuesday is that people can still lie under oath. But if you get caught, I mean, yes, there are significant consequences. However, you can still do it. Is it recommended? No. But is lying recommended in general? Also, no. <laughs> lying is not recommended, but everyone does it. And you learn to do it at a very, very young age. And people do it at like the randomest times during like the randomest things. You know, you have a higher chance to lying to strangers than you do to your friends and family. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah uh, hold on for a second. I'm going to pop this question up here really quick. Jimmy or Christina, if you were a whistleblower, would you trust them to protect you? Uh, that's the roll of the dice, right? That's, That's the, the risk you got to take. That's the risk you got to take. Um, if I was um, in possession, if I felt that I, I I had the goods, I I, I would speak. I, I would I would I would take the chance. I would go for the whistleblower status. I would go live in 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 Happy Acres. You know, some some small town in the middle of Kansas under a new name, and my you know my name would be Bob Smith, and I would work at a flower shop or something, and 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 go into some protection program. But if if yeah, I would do it. I would I would absolutely do it. I wouldn't have a problem with that. How about you, Christina? I think it's a great question. Um, I think for myself, I would like to come forward and and without any information that I had to provide it but would i like to be protected yes absolutely jimmy i'm five foot tall anyone could place me in a potato sack mm -hmm. and no one would know right. like that that's the scary part but i also know self-defense like Kate, right, right? Yeah. so that would be okay but but it but in 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 you know putting jokes aside yes it's so important to come forward and tell your tell the truth and as the saying goes, the truth will set you free. It's so cliche, but for those that, okay, deathbed confessions, Jimmy. And there have been a few whistleblowers that have, in a sense, have come forward right before their passing and tell their stories. Like Philip Corso, with his book, it was written right just a year before his passing. People classify his book as a deathbed confession. It wasn't exactly, but it was kind of in his pretty late years of life. But what I'm getting at is people usually hold on to these stories for decades and it gets so heavy. And right before they pass, they want to tell someone anyone that's nearby to tell them what happened and there is this relief that is that is removed from their shoulders and they feel a lot better and as the saying goes the truth will set you free is that the case is that actually true well have you ever felt so guilty that you did something probably something so silly and you felt really really bad about it and just kept kind of like gnawing at your brain until you told someone or you, until you fixed the situation jimmy Probably yeah, at least of once. Of course. What do you want me to admit to? Yes. No, I don't admit to anything. Right, don't do that. Right, right. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. Look, everything that I did, all right, and I thought that I was slick about it, my parents knew. Every time, every time you, you know, yeah. I remember my mom said to me, and then we'll move on. She goes, Look right in my eyes. 
I, I just got home from school. Right? I just walked in the front door. I was a senior in high school, too, by the way. I wasn't a kid. She goes, look at, look at me. Look at me. Did you do it? I go, no. All right. So she let it go. She let it go. 30 years later, 30 years later, we're sitting in her living room. And my brothers and I and my mom were all sitting there. And and um, my brother says, you know, mom knows that you did that thing. And I looked at her. She goes, yeah, I, yeah, everybody knows. I go, 30 years? You guys haven't talked to her? How long have you? Come on, right? But but that's it. If, if, if you really think that your secret is a secret, it's not. You know, it's it's not. It's not. And it, it's really tough uh, to keep secrets. And like the case with UFOs, uh, Christina, and ET and contact, we know the truth. They think they can keep the lie going, right? And that's where we're at. We know the truth. And, and eventually you're going to get caught. You're going to get caught. And I, I can't, uh, it, it's much worse, right, uh, to, to, to get caught instead of, you know, coming clean. Now, in the interest of one of the things that we need to uh, discuss, or well, two, two, one is the universe. But the second part of it is how much of this has changed our lives, but we didn't know it. Yeah, so you know, no, you're absolutely right, Jimmy. What if all these things are true? What if aliens are here and have been for a very long time? What does what what does our civilization do? How will society react, Jimmy? Again, I think that if we can handle if we can handle the truth in, in some respects, but then again, if we find out that these are like the overseers in Childhood's End, which is a fantastic movie that might not be taken too well. Well, it would be if you present it right. Well, it could be and not would be. It could be. What if what if the government said, "Hey, okay, all right. Uh smallpox or or cancer or healthcare, all of this were the results of of information and and uh, reverse engineering we got from uh, ET television, radio, uh, all of this came from flat screens and the LEDs and LCDs and everything that you enjoy today, GPS, satellites, all of this stuff that you love, streaming services, all came from ET. So it's not like we kept all the secrets to ourselves. Yeah, we did some pretty shady stuff with it. But do you like your microwave popcorn? Do Heck you yeah. That, right? Do you enjoy that? Well, you can thank ET and the jobs that it provided and the factories that were built. What if they did that approach? And I would say that there is a plan out there that has got to be very similar for that, where people are going to be angry about zero-point energy systems and, and that, yeah, of course. But they're going to be able to counteract that with a long list. I hope I'm not giving the government ideas. But that's how you would do it, right? That's how you would approach it. You may be angry but uh, do you like those Velcro sneakers that you wear? That's Heck ET. yeah. Right. That, that's E.T. That's E.T. And if you're okay with that, <laughs> right? If you're okay with carbon fiber and Kevlar and everything else that uh, you enjoy, you get to do your nighttime night photography of wildlife in your backyard. You can thank E.T. for that. And the jobs that it created. So I, I, it's it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. I, I do believe um, uh, one of the uh, 
uh, points I want to get to next is the universe uh, that you want to get to next. I should say. It's well, your... I guess what what we want to get to next. But before we get there, I'm I'm really not convinced, Jimmy. It would be great to have some real confirmation on the things that that have been mentioned. I mean, technologies and patents and the research are publicly available, and and I'm and I'm really on the fence with some of the statements in Corso's book. There is a paper trail with lasers, Kevlar, um, and, and, you know, those types of things. But how do we know for a fact that it came from the Roswell crash, along with fiber optics, as Surf mentioned here? Corso said, oh, yeah, we got all of that from the Roswell crash and lasers, too. Uh, we used to play with the cats now. Transistors and... Right, right. But the thing yeah. is that I'm not fully convinced. Yeah. Oh, I, and, and maybe, maybe that's the way that we might have to deal with it is that there like i just said the transistor which was invented by bell laboratories who i used to work for i worked for bell labs bell laboratories 1947 comes out with the transistor before that it was tubes and big electronics computers were the size of buses right the size of houses and the transistor comes out, everything starts to get miniaturized. Now we have transistor radios and then electronics and, and so forth. So that's attributed to Bell Laboratories. What came off of the transistor? Every job on this planet came off of the transistor, right? So are you going to go and say that all the kids that were sent to college because their parents were working and designing and things with, with factories and the transistors and the radios and the televisions and electronics and the cars and the planes and the trains and everything else that came off of that, that suddenly that was wrong? Well, no, we can't. And, and we can't actually go there. So, no, I think that there is a certain amount of safe zones that you can say that, you know, Kevlar and Velcro and night vision and lenses and, of course, the transistor and fiber optics, fiber optic cable that feeds this studio. The reason why you and I can talk to each other right now because of fiber optics, are we going to back off of that and, and, and start pointing fingers about how the technology got here? No. I, I just don't think that we should just leave well enough alone and move forward. Now, the revelations of it, what, the proof, Christina, that's a great question. I've raised it with a lot of guests this week. And what I said is this. You, you've seen it many times in, in, in courtroom dramas on TV. All right. Let's pack up the jury, let's get in a bus, and let's drive to the crime scene, <laughs> right? right? Right, right, right. Maybe maybe that's what's got to happen. You pack up Congress, right? You pack up the Senate, you put them in buses, and you roll into the Mojave Desert, and you open up the doors, and, and you go and you look at the alien craft, and you bring in the press, which is part of the Constitution, the freedom of the press, right, to report on this, uh, the checks and balances back to the public. And you bite in the press corps and you do this thing. Maybe it's a live stream on YouTube. I don't know. But that's probably the next step. And that's the proof that people need. And then uh, would that happen? Richard Dolan brought up a really interesting point. Would you do that before or after the president announces this on live television? Ooh, that's a good question. I think I think uh, probably both answers are right. But Brian, thank you so much. Didn't Lockheed produce all the stealth craft? Probably reversed from these craft. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, well, on that thought, Brian and Jimmy as well. If we have their craft and bodies, why haven't they shown up en masse to recover their friends in tech? Ask me that again because I was just reading this. This is the best. This is the best post of the day. They gave us Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen, Joe Satriani, and Neil Peart. <laughs> I had to put that up there. Ask me that question again. Okay. If we have their craft and potential bodies as well, why haven't they showed up in mass to recover their friends and tech? And for those listening, please answer that in the comments in the live chat as well. And if you're enjoying the conversation so far, hit the like button. It lets us know that you are enjoying the show. And another question is, 
why aren't our skies full of UFOs? They are, number one. Okay, so that answers the second question first. I think they are completely full. Um, uh, we see them all the time. Uh, and we see them in different uh, iterations, different versions. But so I don't. I mean, I, I when I mean like full, full, the sky's full of UFOs. I mean, like you can open the door and there's UFOs everywhere in the sky. Not just like casually here and there. Only a handful of people have sightings. I'm saying like everyone, everywhere, all at once, <laughs> like the movie, to just see them. Okay. Uh, now that just goes back to my point. The Independence Day moment, right? The giant, the the movie Arrival. You know, some monstrous thing shows up over a city. Um, uh, you're the one that brought up the Phoenix Lights, but have we had that kind of moment yet? No, we haven't. Now, back to your first question, which was the first question was yes, two. One was the mass sighting. What was the first question? Right. Um, so why haven't they shown up to recover oh, yeah. their friends and their buddies? They I, now, how would we know? That is such a great question. How do we know that they haven't? How did uh, that? How, how would we know that? And it could be happening all the time. You know, no ET left behind. Right. How how do we how do we not know that? One of the points, this is this is it involves Skinwalker Ranch and 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 David Grush. One of the statements that is that is uh, that has been made that is going around is that some of these craft were just found, right? Abandoned, landed, nobody on board, right? You go on, it's it's an empty, the keys are still in it, right? But there's nobody there. That's a pretty, now how would that happen? E.T. step off, right? And and get sick, right? Or, or, could that have happened? Did it break down? And then did somebody come back and save them like AAA? Right? I think that that is a, a, a very, very interesting point. And I think it's the same thing. With Skinwalker, how do we not know that that is just a craft that ran out of gas, right? Broke down, got a flat tire, and a uh, hundred million years ago, and now it's covered in dirt and rock. How do we not know that, right? And that back to your point. Whoever was there got on the phone, got out the AAA card, and said, "Okay, we're." We're here on planet one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we need you to come and get us. Our ship broke down. It will not fly. How do we not know that? You know, and I, I don't know if we can answer that question, but uh, it makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, doesn't it? Uh, how many times have we seen that on, on Star Trek? How many times have we seen that on Stargate? How many movies have were stranded on a planet? We need a rescue mission, right? But, but yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know how we would have the answer to that question, but I would, God, I feel pretty safe in saying it happens all the time. Well, I wonder about the Eisenhower alleged meeting. Is there a treaty? It's, it, it, it is out there in many internet conspiracy theories. I mean, so is there some kind of planetary contract where they will kind of stay out of sight what is everyone's thoughts on that in the live chat and you jimmy what are your thoughts on that i i, I where there's smoke there's fire I, I i somehow as crazy as that story is uh where there's smoke there's fire it just makes me wonder if you know, when we go back to Holloman, uh, which was in New Mexico, we have Edwards Air Force Base out here, uh, which was called Moroc Field back then. It wasn't called Edwards Air Force Base, but anyway, that that location, that allegedly uh, Eisenhower went to both of these locations and and met with ET. He got a toothache out in Palm Springs. He's out here, and in the public record, it's he had to go to the dentist. He disappears for a day. 
The story is he went from Palm Springs, which is right down the road, right? He went up to Edwards and met with E.T. And then had the second visit at Holloman, of which there is a, a film uh, that was made of that landing and contact. Talked to quite a few people uh, that um, have seen the film and have seen the E.T. that came off of the craft and the description of uh, this particular uh, E.T. and and what he, I'm saying he, uh, looked like. That I think there, there may be some basis of truth in this. Right? And I'm and and I'm okay with it. Now, what what was in the treaty? What kind of agreements uh, were made? I I don't know. Would would it ever come to light? Yeah, it, it probably it probably eventually would. Uh, uh, Richard Dolan. I'm looking at the clock. We've got other things to get to, but Richard Dolan said um, something the other night that I think is uh, very very important. He said, he said, uh, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, Richard, but he said, you know, agreements like this, you know, and, and the truth coming out, would, would it actually happen and, and what good would come of it? I think that's, uh, that's an interesting point. Maybe some things, you know, you just kind of just, you just got to let it go. You get to the truth, right? You get to the facts, you know where we are today and we move forward. If we continue going backwards and and pointing fingers and and it's that's not going to get us anywhere. Um, and let's just figure out where we are now and and move forward. If you are enjoying the show, please smash the like button, share this link with others, especially those who are just getting into the topic. We have four hundred people watching. Can we get to at least three hundred likes? So if you're enjoying oh, it, hit that like button totally free and it lets us know that you are enjoying the show as well but jimmy's pushing up the ante and saying 400 so everyone that's watching hit the like button before we even continue on but the, the biggest question jimmy might be why is this all important why are we having this conversation why does it matter how is it going to help humanity how whoo man uh yeah 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 okay first First, I think in order for us to move on to the next stage in our evolution, right, is to get into the the community that is the universe. We that that's the that's where we are now. It's the next stage, right? And and everything changes. And I'll give you, I, when I say everything, every every human being on this planet and everybody th that is born in the future will be affected by that. And this is why. Right now, we fight amongst ourselves. That's a big issue. Oh, yeah. Right now, our concerns are with our planet. And right now, we don't really give a crap. So how does that change? How do you change the universal focus on how we look at ourselves on this planet? How do we do that? Well, we make friends. And we change the focus. And the focus goes to out there. Not only are we not alone, but we need to, A, make friends with our alien and ET brothers and sisters. But how, how about trade? How about holidays and vacations, right? Wouldn't you maybe want to take a trip to Zeta Reticuli? You know, you know go, go check it out. B become part of that, right? And, and what is going on, not, not only in our galaxy, but everything else that is out there. That would change the focus of this planet, where suddenly we're not looking at each other as being different. We would look at each other as earthlings, because that's what E.T. E.T. doesn't look down at us and go, okay, so over here we've got uh, atheists, we've got religions, we've got borders, we've got countries. That they don't look. No, they look at us as planet uh, X, one, two, three, four, five. 
That's it. And that's the way that, and that's how things would change. How would it benefit humanity? It would benefit everybody on the planet in an absolute instant. Things would change completely. The ideas of war and anger and borders and skin color and gender and in the, the wealth all of that becomes stupid and secondary and it would happen it would happen overnight ah oh, you're muted and that was something that President Ronald Reagan was kind of pushing at as well. But Tim brings up a good point. Jimmy, some may not play nice. And what if they are not with our best interest in mind? What then? Should, well, should we be like Independence Day, have these really nice signs, and they just blow up everyone? Right, 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 right. Uh, again, you got to roll the dice. You know, th there is no question that there are bad ETs out there. There's no question about that. <laughs> Life, the universe is based on one, ba uh, one fundamental fact. There's no positive without a negative. Ones and zeros, black and white, yes and no, right? And everything is balanced out with that. Everything is balanced out. So are there bad ETs? Of course. Do you want to interface with them? Of course not. Would they have our best intentions in mind? No. But I, I, I do believe um, I, from all of my heart that if E.T., a, a bad race of E.T., wanted this planet, they, they would have already taken it. Like the Klingons. Well, they, they, they would have already done it. You know, maybe we just aren't, A, interesting enough. Maybe our planet isn't as cool as we think it is, right? Maybe when uh, you go to a holiday travel office on some other planet and they go, okay, now, where would you like to go? Pop, 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 pop. Our planet's not even on that list. Maybe there is a planet out there that makes Las Vegas look dull, and they go there for vacation, and they've taken that over. That our planet isn't that big, it's not that cool, it's not this, it's not that. Maybe we're just not that interesting. And that is a big possibility. Maybe there's something out there much more fun and interesting than us. Or maybe they did that already. Dun dun dun. Maybe, maybe they they maybe we we all live on the farm. We're the motel six of the Milky Way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but that is um uh I talked about the movie 65, right? I think that's what yeah, 65. If you haven't seen it, uh, go and watch it. Um I'm not gonna give anything away. Just go watch it. You'll love it. It's 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 a great movie. Um but the 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 basics of the basics, Christina. When we look at the universe, and I did a, a a really cool story about this earlier today on the news. The basics of the basics are basic. You've got basic chemistry. You've got basic atoms. You've got basic elements. Basics. Particles are particles, and they only combine so many ways. It's not an infinite thing. So. The same stuff that we have here is everywhere else. And that is oxygen, nitrogen, gold, and diamonds. It doesn't matter what you want to pick. It's the same thing throughout the universe, right? So what, what would make this place any more special than anything else, right? And why would life here be any different than any place else? Why? Because because we're cool, but we're also egoic, and we think that our planet is the coolest planet, which it is because we live here. And thank you so much for the super sticker. But let me answer your question though. And so so that the, the basics of the basics, right? So could we be ET? The DNA that makes us us that is on this planet is the same that is everywhere else, Christina. So I think that we're all related. We, we are aliens. We are E.T. 
because we're all stardust, you know, as they say. And they had that, like, you know, it in memes, memes. But Viren, thank you so much for that. And Zeus, thank you so much for that as well, for supporting the channel and the RV fund as well. But Jimmy, you do bring up a good point. Do we have alien DNA? Well, that's been speculated by some time. Scientists that have looked into DNA, only a handful, only a, a small percentage of that is like properly deciphered. There's a big percentage that say, we don't actually know where this DNA comes from. Could it be related to panspermia? We also don't know. I mean, look at the octopus, right? But isn't that their part of panspermia, right. which is awesome. You're answering your own questions, which I love. The answers are yes, 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 and yes, and yes, and yes, yes. Uh, the, the basic sugars, the basic sugars that make up RNA, which is the uh, the instruction sequence for DNA. Like ice cream, uh, sprinkles, donuts. Are all over the universe. They're flying around on asteroids, impacting other planets, just like uh, the stuff that uh, 82 more for Jimmy. That's what I'm talking about right there. Come on. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. Um, yeah, 318. Come on. Let's get to 400. We've got a few minutes left. But it, it is such, when I, I use the word fundamental so often, because when you get to the basics of the basics of the basics, it's everything is just a numbers game. And that goes with particles and how they combine and the, the micro of the micro to the macro of the macro, which is the, the universe itself and how many planets are out there and how many types of life are out there. Advanced, primitive, it doesn't matter. It's an infinite, it's a huge, it's a numbers game, Christina. So now back to, uh, back to your point though. Um, how does this benefit uh, not only humanity, but but how does this change us? And I think that the the government uh, has a plan for this. They have to. I think corporations have a plan for this. Corporations run the planet now. It's not governments that run the planet. Everything is uh, decided for us by by corporations. Google and Apple. Um, and and Amazon have more power on this planet than any any country does, right? So, do they have a plan in place? I think that they absolutely do. I I, I really do. Um, how to? Wouldn't you want to be able to um, not only profit, right? Okay, right? Profit from ET contact, but also get to a, a point where all stress is relieved, right? The the stress of, of life that we can, uh, instead of stressing on our existence, we stress out on how much more we can learn and how much more we can create and how much more we can advance ourselves and our knowledge and consciousness. That's the stress that we want. What we don't want is the stress of uh, jobs and monthly bills and and labor, you know. That's and so that's how a company would profit off of this, where you take this into another direction. And I think that they have a plan in place for that. Though they they are sitting around talking about these subjects, and as esoteric as that is, existential as that is, these plans are in place and they have to be in place. I think that's why the conversation is going on right now. The, the, the fact that, um, Christina, the fact that the media is suddenly um, okay with talking about this, somebody told them it was okay. Think about that. I don't think, they didn't do it because they felt good, right? <laughs> that it was the right thing to do. No. No, somebody told them E.T. is okay to talk about. There's stuff going on. So right now the conversation is E.T., the universe, Oumuamua, and exoplanets. Well, about that plan, on the course that we are on, what do you see happening going forward this year with this topic? What what will be known by the end of the year, in your opinion, Jimmy? Well, you know that meme? There's a meme 
I, I, I can't I love all memes. There's a, there's a meme of that guy eating popcorn, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. That's that's where we're at. That's where the public is at. The public is right there. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. They are the public is ready. Um, I, I with the uh, uh, success of something like ancient aliens, with the success of the knowledge of Leslie Kanan and Ralph Blumenthal back in December of 2017, the success, the click rate, the not the, the storm area 51. This is what the this is at the stage we are at. We want this, we need it, and we are ready for it. Nobody, I mean nobody, not even Neil deGrasse Tyson is going to be surprised. That's right. I said it. Right? Even Michael Shermer, even Michael Shermer is going to step back and go, well, you know, I didn't really mean everything that I said. You know, I'm okay. That's, that's, uh, uh, of course, the universe has got life out there. Of course, all those skeptics, they're, they're ready for it. You know, I, I just don't believe that uh, there's somebody out there right now, especially in the scientific circles uh, or the skeptic society, that is comfortable in saying with confidence that we are all there is. No. No, no, no. Nobody will say that now. That was a possibility 20 years ago. And you could say that 25 years ago before exoplanets were discovered. You could have said that 100 years ago, right? But not today. That's not where we are at. No. No, it's 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 a different world. And this conversation is becoming more mainstream. And Andrew says, anyone catch that one saying he entered a 30-foot UFO for a few minutes? Then it was a football huge inside and exited four hours later so that was provided by daniel sheehan where he was told by a crash retrieval program insider that told him this story and honestly like i I love this case so much which just recently came forward but it's so fascinating because it really does sound like a tardis and let me jimmy and you know this i want a tardis i want to travel through time and space all day every day but you know there have been accounts of ufos being bigger on the inside than on the outside over the decades and manipulation of space time seems to uh seems like to be at the center of all of this even dr taylor from skinwalker ranch speaking about speaking to the whole team during a panel he mentioned that time and time anomalies appear to be at the core of all aspects of ufos and paranormal at skinwalker ranch so when we talk about time and space tardises and and this as well that andrew had mentioned which Daniel Sheehan had said uh, in an interview not too long ago, it's really, it's, it opens your minds to these possibilities. So are these things accessing other dimensions or coming from other dimensions? See, that's, but I think that that is the point. We are not at a level of understanding things. All right, we, we we just we're not there for for a race of beings to come to this planet, knowing the the vastness of space. The universe is a big place, you know, and the closest star to us is four and a half light years away. Do you know how far that is? How many miles that do you have any idea? Right. So for somebody to be able to get here and we think that we can understand what's going on in their heads, that we have a level of understanding that we can sit down and have a conversation about things and we can understand the technology with the laws of physics as we understand them today are not the same as they were 300 years ago are not the same as 400 years ago or 500 years ago. And, and we are learning more. Do, do we honestly think that their version and what they've learned about the laws of physics that have allowed them to get here, that we're going to have an understanding of that and we're going to be able to sit down and discuss it? No, 
No, absolutely not. So when the discussion comes up, hey, man, well, you know, the craft was this big. You know, it was this big. It was in my backyard. And I walked in, and it was bigger than Westgate Shopping Mall on the east side. Well, yeah, sure it was. What What is so hard to even think about or wonder about or ponder about that? Of course. That kind of technology just, I mean, especially to E.T., sounds very simple. Why, why, why would that freak anybody out? Why would faster than light travel freak anybody out? Why would traveling through a wormhole freak anybody out? That that is some impossible thing to do. But it, it, it's not. We're talking about somebody that is able to get here. Christina, I'm going to leave you with this thought. And this was a great show today. But it's such a simple thing. We have come so far in 150 years. 150 years ago, wagon trains. Okay. A hundred, one lifetime ago, wagon trains, horses, right? 150 years ago. Where we have come in the last 75 years, it's insane. Where we went from 1900 to 1945, we went from wagons to jet planes and atomic bombs and, and radios and television, right? In, in, in four decades, right? And where we have come in the last 25 years, last 30 years since 1995, right? So where are we going to be in another 100 years? Uh, the, the technology, the thing, the, I, don't, I, I don't think we have a concept of that. So if we're going to interface with a race of ETs that are going to show up here, that is a billion years more advanced than us, and you think we're going to understand how they do it? <laughs> no, we're not, let alone 100 years more advanced than us or 500 years more advanced than us. Just think about how far we have come in such a short time. And 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 th that's it. I mean, there isn't really another, dis you know, E.T., why, why, why don't they just show up here and, and cure cancer and, and fix things for us? We would understand it even if they, they, they arrived. We wouldn't understand. We're not at that level. We're not, we're not there. We're just not. Not, 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 as, not as compassionate human beings. Oh, we're there. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about consciousness. We're there. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about technology. How would we sit down and communicate? I'm serious, too. Oh, one of my big fears in, in all of this happening is um, uh, it, it, you hear all of these intellectuals and these philosophers when they when they get uh, asked this question? Well, how would we communicate? Oh, we'd communicate with math. You know, hydrogen. We would communicate with the basics of math. One plus one equals two. One and zero, and 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 then and then, then we can figure out the alphabet, and then we can figure out the and 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 ET just steps off the craft and goes. We haven't done math in a hundred million years. <laughs> right? right? Hey, I, I, I don't know about that. We learned about math in, in school, but what I do want to say is that's um, and my fear though. That's you know, the basics of the basics that we're expecting, you know, for communication. And ET goes, now <laughs> we got to teach you a whole nother thing and it has nothing to do with with math what does it have to do with uh well everything color. in many in many color. aspects and i guess color as well but i do want to thank aunt for sharing the channel welcome jenny to the channel as well and everyone please share this channel and and other videos on these amazing topics to those that you think will also enjoy the conversations that we have today jimmy thank you so much for doing today's show with me oh and zenza filled me in with the surprise we only need 10 more people to join the discord server to reach 2000 members from wow. people from all over
over the world where with so many different mysterious topics to share and discussions, which is a 24-7 uh, via text or even voice chat rooms that you have access to where you can speak to so many, I mean, 2,000 people, which is unbelievable. So Zenza, what, thank you for that little surprise. What is Discord? I will let you know after the show. Jimmy, thank you so much for being on today. I'll see everybody. Great show today. Thank you so much. We almost got to 400. We're at 350. I was pretty close. So hit the pretty like button before you head out and Jimmy put you backstage. Just hold on. But uh, for the Discord server, it's it's very safe. It's very friendly. It's troll free. So you're able to share your thoughts, your insights, your opinions and more with almost 2000 like minded members. So it is a great place to where you can feel like you belong, which is what we all want. If you enjoyed today's show, hit the like button. It lets us know that you enjoyed today's show and the conversation. It was a different format today. It was more of a discussion, asking a lot of questions, more so than bringing in you know, um, historical cases. But we do usually do that for mysteries with a history. So if you haven't subscribed, do so now. We do four live shows a week right here every single week week and that is it for today i will catch all of you tomorrow for strange news at 3 p.m pst where i'll be covering all of the strange news and mysterious headlines from around the world also follow me on twitter at eyes underscore on the skies for all of my updates and news that is where you're going to find everything that you need right there on twitter that is like my most used platform so follow me there at eyes underscore on the skies for all of my updates and news that is it for today. I will catch all of you tomorrow. Be safe and remember, keep your eyes on the skies.